Hey there, welcome to Bright Engineering. Today we are going to learn something about Norton's theorem, right? So, and Norton's theorem is just like every circuit analysis where we have to find our equivalence resistance and also find the current, right? So here we can see that we are being asked to find the equivalent circuit and then this side is open circuited, right? So it means that we have a load here, a resistive load here, where we have to find the Norton current or the equivalent voltage across or the equivalent current that flows through that particular resistor, right? So in Norton's theorem, we are going to find the IN, which is Norton's equivalent current, and after that, we find the Norton's equivalent resistance, right? So under Tevenin, we found VTH and RTH, but in here, we are going to find our IN and then our RN, right? But then just like Tevenin, RN is the same as RTH, right? So it means that here we are going to make sure that every current source in there is open circuited and every voltage source in there is short circuited. So now our circuit is going to look like this. right and now we have to find our equivalence resistance for this right so it means that if we have to find our equivalence resistance we have four here we have eight here we have eight here and we have five here right so we can ignore this and this from it so we have a circuit going like this and then with the side right since we are looking at it from this angle it means that here is considered as a node right so it means that this eight this four and this eight are in series but then the sum of it is in parallel with this five right so our rn is simply eight plus four plus eight which is in parallel with the five right and this is going to give us 20 so we are going to get 20 times five over 20 plus five and computing this we are going to get 100 divided by 25 which is going to give us 4 right so just like that we are done with our Norton's resistance so this is our Norton resistance for the circuits right and now we have to find our IN right so if we have to find our IN it means that we have to short circuit the terminals that is the A and B that we are supposed to find right so we go back to our original equation our original circuits with this with every component in there Okay, sorry, we're going to go this way with a 4 here, good, with a voltage source here actually, with a resistance here, with a resistance here, and with a resistance here too, right? And then our terminals A and B is going to be short circuited because we want to find I N, right? I N flows to the short circuit. Right, so we have our five here, we have our eight, our eight, four, twelve volts, and then two amps. Right. So in order to find our current, we have to find the I N. So we are going to use what we call mesh analysis to solve this question right so we are just going to assign current to the particular loops that we have because we just short circuited this one we are not going to assign current to this particular loop right but then we are going to assign current to the whole loop because when current is supposed to flow here ideally when it gets here it has to split so that some will pass through this pipe and some will go here but then because this is short circuited and because current always takes the easiest path or we always want the easiest path out all the current that is flowing will pass through this side which is the short circuit leaving or rendering the five ohms useless right so it means that our five ohms won't be part of our calculation so the current that we are going to assign to this place is going to be like this right without considering the five and here we are going to get our current right so let's say here is our i1 and this side is going to be our i2 right but then if we have to find this side that our current is going to be i1 already we have a current source here so we know that already i1 is 2 right so we just have to write our i1 to be 2 amps 
right so now what we are going to deal with is this particular loop right so with this loop now we are going to consider this so we are going to get for loop 2 we are going to get 8 i2 plus 4 into bracket i2 minus i1 because this current will be flowing this way and this will be flowing that way right plus 8 i2 again right which is going to be equal to the voltage source we have here which is 12 right so now we are going to get 8 i2 plus 4 i2 minus 4 i1 plus 8 i2 which is equal to 12 right so this plus this plus this giving us 20 so we have 20 i2 minus 4 i1 and it's equal to 12 right but then we already know that i1 is equal to 2 so adding 2 to this multiplying this 4 by this 2 is going to give us negative 8 right and when the negative 8 comes here it's going to be plus 8 so now we are getting 20 i2 is equal to 12 plus 8 which is also going to be 20 and now our i2 is simply 1 right and we know that our i2 is the current that is flowing through this particular circuit so it means that our i n is 1 so i2 is the same as i n and then this is going to give us 1 right but then interestingly for for pevening we draw an equivalent circuit where it has the load resistance and then the rth to be in series right but then this time around we are very right when we are drawing the equivalent circuit for Norton, we have our current source, which is going to be our IN. And then we have our RN, which is the Norton resistance. But then this time, it's going to be in parallel with the load resistance, right? But then since originally, the circuit didn't give us a load resistance and this was short-circuited, this is going to be our equivalent circuit. So assuming that this was supposed to be, say, this was supposed to be say four right maybe the resistance that we have here is four and that we short circuited we open circuited to find the current that's flowing through this four it means that we are going to get here to be four right so this is going to be our rn and this is going to be our rl so we, are, we would probably get our current which is one which is one amps then we get our rn that we found which is four ohms and then if our rr is supposed to be four we are also going to get four here right so the current that is flowing through this is going to be as a result of current divider rule right so when the one arms current goes here they won't find the current that's passing through this we know that it is the other resistor which is this divided by the sum of the two multiplied by the current right so current through the 4 ohms is simply going to be 4 over 4 plus 4 times the total current which is the 1 right and our answer is going to be 0 0.5 amps thank you for watching this video please don't forget to share comment and then subscribe